Aloha, this is Douglas Bischoff and Hao Wong reporting on the Automate Excel Functions, which was recorded in the Journal of Accountancy in January 2005 by Jeff Lenning. A few of the main key points in this article was how using macros can speed up many of your repetitive operations and boost your productivity. Also, it talked about how making macros are very simple and how they can be used for many different purposes. Um, but for us, the main gist of the article was how you can save a lot of time if you use macros right. Okay, so here we have the Excel workbook open. And you'll what you'll do to begin to make a macro, you'll go over to all the way to the right to the developer tab and you'll click on that and you'll see record macro. So we'll click on that. And so this box will pop up and it asks you to first name your macro. So we're going to do um, an, an accounts receivable detailed uh, list. So we'll write accounts receivable details. And so you'll notice that I made this all one word because this will not, if you if you try and put a space in between it, it won't work. So you either have to make it all one word or put an underscore in between the words. But I just decided to make it all one word. Uh, so the shortcut key will we'll make it control A for accounts. And this is uh, the key that you'd want to use is not like a common. You don't want to do like control C or control V um, because that's you use those often. So you want to get something that's not used and also that you'll remember. So which the next is the drop down key to which where do you want to store the macro? Um, and there's three different options. There's the personal macro workbook, the new workbook, and this workbook. The personal personal macro workbook is the option where you could store all of your different macros um, in one place. But for this video, we'll choose this workbook. Uh, you, and you want to describe this macro so you always know because sometimes you'll get a lot of different macros and you want to know which one each one is used for. So we'll just do accounts receivable detail list. Now you also may want to put down when it was created just so you know if it's out of date or just how long ago it was created. So for this, we'll just do 6, 30, 2011. Okay, so now we'll click the OK button. So now you'll notice that we are now recording a macro. You'll notice up here it says stop recording. So that tells us that we are currently recording. So now we're going to make, for this ma specific macro, we're going to make a header for our um, company for the account receivable detail list. So we'll do click consulting. Um, what it is, accounts, receivable, detail, and then for your end, and then we'll leave that blank because the goal for a macro is that you're going to be using this at a lot of different times and you don't want to have to go over the um, pain sake of always having to retype it. So we'll just leave that part blank for the user to fill in for whatever uh, date they need to fill in there. So now we'll do a purpose. The purpose, um, the purpose of this worksheet is to provide the detail or the then the date. We'll just do X's for whatever date you're working on. Accounts receivable balance. Okay. So now we'll just uh, make this a little bit smaller here. We'll merge them and wrap them just to make it look a little more appealing to the eye. Make the title a little bit bigger. Okay, and then uh, we'll get on with the spreadsheet. 
so details. So now this is just the header for the account receivable detail list. So now that we've finished the header that we know we want, we'll click right here on stop recording. And that's super important to click stop or stop recording because if you didn't click that and you continued on with all of your details and all your accounts receivable, it would record all that and you don't want that because you just want this header part um, every time that you open up a every time that you want to do a new accounts receivable detail list you just want this to pop up so we clicked um, stop recording and so now to execute the macros there's two different ways that you can do that and my partner will begin that right now uh, first of all so there are two ways uh, we can execute the macro function the first way is uh, uh, by deleting the everything we have on in our Excel and then we uh, click the Control A button so see right now we have the everything on, on Excel and the second way is that we use the insert function so we press the insert and we see the button we click the button the picture and and we will create the, our own button and then we see the macro name and under the macro name we see the account receivable detail and we click the account receivable, receivable detail to connect, to, to, to connect them and we click OK and then right now we see the button one and we can rename the button one uh, to the account receivable detail and then we can delete the, the everything we have on sale and we press the button one and right now uh, by using this function we come up with the the, the every the account receivable detail we have we typed before so uh, by using the macro function just like my partner mentioned before we can save a lot of time whenever we want to use the we want to have uh, use the account receiver detail used for this header we don't need to type again and again so thank you